Hello and welcome to part two of my e-bike build series. Um, in this series we're using the Tongsheng TSDZ2 mid-drive motor kit to convert this donor bike into an e-bike. Uh, in part one, which you'll see a link to over here, we went through this instruction booklet and we have fitted the motor. Sadly, that's as far as this book went, so won't need that anymore. We're now going off-piste and we're gonna make it up as we go along, so stay with me. So just to summarize after last episode, we've now fitted the motor itself. We've got the chain back, we've got the pedals back, but we still have to sort out this gear shifter cable, which we've got to reroute. We've got to put a new gear shifter on. We've got to put new gear levers on. We've got to put a screen on and we've got to fit a battery. So still lots to do. I think we're gonna crack on and look at that gear shifter cable first. So the first job was to remove the hand grips. These are always a little bit stubborn and the way I get them off is I push a screwdriver between the hand grip and the handlebars and that then allows me to wiggle them off. I then loosened off the brake cables so that I could then disconnect them from the levers. So you turn these so they're all in line and then once the cable's loose you can just pull them out like that. And then I actually removed the brake levers from the handlebars. The next job was to fix the screen. I uh, loosened off the fixing bolts here using an Allen key and attached it to the center of the handlebars. And then I tightened it up again. Then I loosened off the fixing for the control switch for the screen and I slid that on. As well as the new brake levers. I didn't tighten anything up at this stage. Sliding on the new gear shifter. The throttle. And the other brake lever. So I attach the brake cables to the new brake levers, again making sure those slots fit align, and then popping the cable in like this. I then ran the new shift cable housing down the bike, uh, and I cable tied actually to existing cables. So I used the existing shift cable housing at the end here to get an idea of length for my new cable. Just threading on there the end of the shift cable housing. And then feeding the shift cable down the housing. And then I threaded through the new cable and attached it to the derailleur. Keeping everything neat, I snipped off the end and popped an ending on there. Tightened up the brake cables, now I've got the new um, brake levers installed. And check that the brakes were still functioning correctly. Then I ran the control cable and the battery power cable through this area in the frame, ready to connect to what I just installed on the handlebars and to the battery when it gets installed. Connected up the controller to the screen and use these connections on the back to connect the throttle and the two brake levers to the screen as well. I lubricated the handlebars so it's easier to get the hand grips on again. I made the mistake of using washing up liquid and in fact they still move around so apparently alcohol is a good thing to use. And then I tightened everything up so that it was in position. I 
I also did my best to neaten up the cables with a cable tie. And connected the motor up to the screen. Okay, so we're at a very interesting part of the build. Basically, I want to start thinking about where we're going to put the battery. Now, as I mentioned in that first video about why I chose this bike, this space here is perfect for batteries. And in fact, if you can, you want to use these bolts here, which are ordinarily used for uh, water bottles. Uh, the trick is whether they actually line up with your battery. Now, I've actually had a look and I would say we probably can get away with it. I'm going to give it a go because if you can't do that, then you've got really two other options. One is to try and put another hole or holes in your battery um, mount here. This is the bit that actually the battery slides onto. Uh, and that can be fraught with problems because if you'd put it into a place where it's not actually reinforced, it hasn't got that metal there, it means it's not strong and also there may be electronics or wiring in the way. The second option is to try and put another hole actually in your frame somewhere. Now that can be done and the way to do it is to use something called riv nuts. However, the, every time you drill a hole in your frame it is going to weaken it slightly and um, this frame is aluminium, which means it will be even weaker. So I really want to avoid that if I can. So the first thing I'm going to do is see how we get on with this. So I took off the water bottle holder. Removed the mounting plate from the battery. And with a lot of trial and error, I did manage to fit it. and connect it up. A little bit of neatening going on there with some cable ties. Okay, so I fitted the battery. Now, full disclosure, I've not fitted it properly yet. And the reason is that the uh, holes that are actually currently in the frame are actually a bit too low for the holes that are in the battery uh, fitting here. So what I've done, I've actually used the top hole that's actually on the frame as the bottom hole on the battery fitting. Now, as you can see, it's pretty secure but there's nothing actually supporting at the top here definitely something I need to sort out uh, another observation is that now it's all connected up the wires are they look a little bit untidy and I mean it's basically because they need to be over length to take into account different you know designs of bike frame um, and it's something I really want to have a look at see if I can neaten up but right now I think we're in a good shape to sort of give this a bit of a test and see how we get on Okay, so first impressions are it's pretty good, to be honest with you. It feels much more refined and subtle than the rear-wheel drive kits that I fitted in the past. I think the main thing is on a rear-wheel kit, when you, when you um, start to pedal, the sensor, all the sensor can do is tell that you're pedaling, and so immediately kicks the power in. This kit, from what I can tell, seems to detect how much torque you actually need to apply to turn those pedals and then it actually gives you assistance when you need it, which is brilliant because it then means that you're not powering and wasting battery when you don't need it. The other thing that's quite cool is that because it's actually at the pedals, when you're in first gear, you're actually getting far more torque out of the motor. And uh, as you go up the gears, of course it drops. But that's brilliant, particularly with a, slight, with a lower powered motor because you're getting the, the torque when you really need it. But you're not wasting money and energy on a bigger motor. Now I've actually charged the battery up and the odometer was at zero so we're currently at 22 kilometers and we've got uh, just over half battery on the display which is pretty good going because I've not been shy at getting the power. So overall I think I'm quite impressed actually and probably this is a more appropriate kit for someone who's not used to e-bikes and is maybe a little bit nervous of e-bikes because it's so much more subtle the way the power is actually blended in. Okay, so that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. There are a few things I still want to do to the bike. I want to sort out a proper mounting for the top of this battery, and I want to configure the computer properly. So uh, watch out for videos on that. And also watch out in about four weeks time, I'm gonna do another video on my impressions of this kit after riding it for a month or so. So if you wanna see those videos, please do subscribe, hit that notification bell, and give me a like. And I will see you on the next one. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.